good morning. Bring the music down a little bit. Ah, uh, one second. Okay. So, back to glowing telegram. Of course. What else would it be? Uh, let's see, hopefully that's a good volume level. So we got we got the build going on over here. Um, and glowing telegram on the left. <laughs> and today, I actually spent some time yesterday because I know I mentioned it on the last coding stream, you know, maybe looking at that Twitch bot some more and Elixir and after spending a little bit more time on it yesterday, I, I realized that I <laughs> really still don't have a good sense of um, like how to have it run. Like I recall on the last stream we were working on it that I had it running and it was running and like you could see chat messages come in. But then I went back to it yesterday and I tried to run it just with mix. Uh, and I tried a few different ways. And it went back to a behavior that I saw before where it would start and then just like immediately exit after connecting. So I don't know what's up with that. Um, and then ended up, you know, doing just the like a proof of concept bot uh, with TypeScript and Node.js. Um, and I think at some point I'll go back to, to working on that and I'll probably, um, I don't know, we'll, we'll see. Maybe uh, it'll occur to me what I'm doing wrong on the Elixir side of things between now and then. But uh, I think instead of working on that, I kind of, I've, I've, I've deprioritized that. Move that down here. Um, we can work on some other things that uh, I need to have happen uh, in the actual Glowing Telegram UI. Um, and as soon as the build finishes, I can pull that up again. Uh, I think the idea though is so YouTube category and other settings to series. So, hmm, let's see. Uh, if I look in this project, we can look at the schema for the series. So right now the series, I think that text is big enough on, on screen. Uh, we got an ID, a title, a description, a thumbnail URL. I'm not really doing anything with the thumbnails right now. Created at, played at, uh, updated at rather, and uh, playlist ID. And the playlist ID is then um, the start of things that I want to store in, at the series level, right? So, um, and then we have episodes and episodes can be associated to a series. So beyond the playlist, what else do I want to add to the series is the question, right? So category, um, the YouTube API, this is not the right tab. Um, I don't think I have that tab anymore. Could it, could I, got a tab for Tailwind. We'll get back on that at some point. I think we can see just in the YouTube upload API over here, some of that. Do I have that inside of structs? You know, passing through category, it's a, it's a U8. So it's just a number and that represents, here's something I can show. Um, in YouTube Studio, once it loads, Take 
take a sip of coffee while that uh, while it's loading. There we go. No, nope, still loading. Either that or <laughs> all the videos are gone, but I know that's not the case. Uh, this page is slowing down Firefox. Interesting. Uh, so if we look at one of these videos, but this is basically what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to, as part of uploading videos, pre-fill. So we got the playlist now auto-filled on upload. Um, and then the other things would be maybe tags, series tags. It says uh, tags otherwise play a minimal role in helping viewers find the videos, but I can have tags anyway on the series. Um, I could parameterize language. I think right now that's hard coded somewhere in here. Yeah, default language in Miami type. Um, and then recording data is pulled from the media, so it's not a series level attribute. Uh, publish to subscription feeds and notify subscribers. Right now, I think I'm just setting that to false all the time. Notify subscribers. Um, and I do, yeah. So that's something that, let me, let me go back to the ticket. So gathering information, what, are, what do we wanna do as part of this ticket? Um, so, notify subscribers. Um, category. Tags. Might as well. Um, I think everything else is kind of fine as is. We're not doing anything with a thumbnail URI that's being passed in, are we? Mm -hmm. We currently are not trying to set the thumbnail on the video, which is fine because I'm, I'm not putting, I've not gotten to the part where I'm handling thumbnails through Glowing Telegram yet. So this might be a good place to start. So, let's start. I, I converted my project task into an issue earlier. So we'll get going on a, on a branch for this work. And I think the first thing I have to do, because the schema doesn't have the fields on the series for things. Well, here's a question. Hmm. Do I? Let's take a look at the front end and how that works. Was what I'm wondering about is, um, We're queuing a task to upload the video uh, from somewhere. That's like from the episodes list view, I think. And we have a, a button to do that, upload episode to YouTube button. And here is currently where things are hard coded um, to 20, which is like the gaming category with no tags and notify subscribers to be false. Um, and what do we have here? We have the episode. So I could, hmm, I think there's, there's a couple things I could do. One could be here in this component, 
I pull in the series that's associated with the episode. Uh, it could be interesting because we are Right, not all of the episodes that are in the set of episodes we're displaying in this dialogue could be, or, or would necessarily be for, for the same series. So if we were to do it that way, for each episode, um, one option would be to grab the, the associated series somewhere in here. It's an option. Uh, then another option, maybe in data provider. Right, so we're calling fetch to YouTube upload. Um, so this is this this is this is where the buck stops, right? Because we're not going to have. Um, this, so this is calling into the YouTube upload API, and it's not going to know how to talk to or get information about the series like everything we need to pass to the upload process needs to be prepped prior to hitting this endpoint hmm. uh, I've decided that's 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 how I want to architect like you know how, how all, all the different services interact is that that that's how that's supposed to work so Given that, another possibility that I was, uh, that passed through my mind would be instead of trying to read the data from the series that's associated to the episode, have each episode have those fields, have notified subscribers in category and tags. Now there's something to be said for doing that because if I do want to have them vary, I can do that. And I, I did at one point, uh, so putting that putting that down for a second. Uh, actually, let's, let's, let's pick that back up. Look at that a little bit more. So another aspect of that would be that I would imagine that in the automation that I have right now that creates episodes we're already copying things out of the series the like the playlist uh, ID into the episode so that's what's going on here right so we can keep doing that and so the series would have values for category and tags and notify subs subscribers and then when the episode is created, we would clone that out. And so then we would be reading from episode here. So that's worth considering. Kind of a separate thing from that, I was imagining in this dialogue where you're confirming that you wanna upload these things that these might end up being editable so you could override at the last minute. I think if I was to support doing that um, I would want to write out those changes back to the episode if we were to try to do this where we weren't copying category and tags and notify subscribers into the episode that the data was coming from the series then it wouldn't make sense to write it back out this would be kind of like a, a transitory let me override what it does sort of thing I think there are use cases where I might want to override some of these things per episode. Uh, or I, I can imagine doing that. And we're already kind of doing this copy from series into episode for the playlist. So I think 
we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna grow the scope of what I'm trying to do here to be adding those fields to the series and to the episode um, and then updating the UI for editing and creating series to have those fields and then updating the UI for the episode to have those fields and then updating the code that copies from the series into the new episodes, the, the bulk create, to also populate that. All right. Uh, yeah, all, all of those things. So I think I'm just gonna try to, to, to do it all. Um, we're gonna run task, migration generate. This is gonna be add um, edit data to series and episodes and CRUD API, because that's the only place where we have diesel migrations. <laughs> All right, oh, and, uh, and the build finish too, apparently. All right, so, um, we have kind of examples here. Alter table. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, that's, that's how you do SQL. <laughs> uh, that's that's clever, right? Going from the name. We're not trying to add metadata. We're trying to add. I mean, we could do JSONB, right, and just stuff everything in there. But uh, I don't. I would need a more specific reason to do that, like uh, something that's giving us, you know, some arbitrary keys and values that we want to pass through. Uh, so what we want to add though is category and notify subscribers and tags. Okay, so boolean not null default false. Looks good. Can you do multiple add columns in, uh, yeah. Uh, that's not the column we want though. We want, uh, all right, more stuff going on in, uh, Pokemon community game over there. Category. Um, so this is not text. This is actually going to be, uh, apparently, when we typed it in Rust was uh, an 8-bit integer. Uh, let's just call it an int, maybe. Not null default 20. That'll mirror kind of the, the behavior that we have. Otherwise, hey look, it, it guessed the next one as a text array, not null default. What is this? Uh, let's see. Oh uh, yeah, Postgres list uh, expression. Not array, uh, not list, array. At least they have a dark mode. Okay, so just as a refresher of how array values work in Postgres. To write an, uh, an array value as a literal constant, enclose the element values within curly braces. See, they have single quotes around the curly braces. All right, so we have Sal Imp. Um, okay, so apparently that's what you do. You can also use the array constructor syntax. I think this is what I've seen swear
An array constructor is an expression that builds an array value using values for its member elements. seems like this is also okay, so I guess I'll do that. All right, cool. Um, so that's adding those columns to the series table, and then we have to do the same thing for episode uh, episodes. I have mixed feelings about this because it's going to be wrong in some cases for the category. I could just have it allow nulls. series I will have it have defaults like uh, for the category I think I think even for the episodes, I'm gonna leave it just to default to 20. Um, if I care a lot about the value being uh, inaccurate, I can go back and update the the records manually. Yeah. Okay. So let's do the down migration. Yep. So nice. That might even be valid. Let's let's try going up and down. So migration run. Uh, yeah, the normal warning. So let's let's try doing a down. Checks out, and then back up. Not generate. All right, up and down and back up again and uh, no errors. So that takes care of the SQL side of things. And then that's gonna have updated schema to RS to add those fields here. Hmm. Interesting. Maybe I don't want, maybe I want to change the type that I'm using for that column to more closely align with the type that I'm using elsewhere, just to, to make things just a little bit easier. Also, I don't know why it's taking so long to navigate to the definition of that. So if I wanted to do that, I just need to change up. Instead of it being an int, what are the other options in Postgres? I think there's like a small int and a tiny int. Let me move this over here. Uh, Postgres int types. Numeric types, there we go. So the smallest we have here is a small int that's two bytes. We don't have anything smaller. I'm gonna 
have a, a one byte numeric type. It's kind of a, of limited use. And it's not like I care about the size. I'm just thinking for the purposes of uh, having <laughs> having the rust type for the um, uh, oh, let's see coming back from the table close more closely aligned with the type that the uh, that we're passing around elsewhere, but it's fine. I guess. We can, we can do like tiny ants. There we go. All right, and then revert. And then run. And tiny ant does not exist. What do you mean? Oh, it doesn't. Where did I get Tiny Ant from? Tiny Ant was the thing that if it did exist, <laughs> might be one bite. Um, okay, small ants it is. There we go. That even has, you know, the, the syntax high highlighting should let me know. All right. All right, success. So then we should see in schema that we have now an int2 instead of an int4. Okay. Um, um, so that gets the table set up, right? Now in series, structs. Actually, here's a question. So in update to RS, Like, I feel like I should probably just move this into structs so that there are all of the structs that dictate how things work are in the same place. Uh, what are we missing? Yeah, this stuff. Import it. Probably that. Consider importing this struct to its public re export. Use create schema series to get mm. unused. Okay, so that's not where. Now we have this, we're missing series. Okay, and then we're not using that. So does that work? Yes. Cool. And doesn't know where this is this is from. So we can that uh, is, is this unnecessary now that's okay so then that can just be that it's not happy about that all oh, right because we've not updated uh, models we gotta update models, which does not auto update when you change the, the schema. So the episode now has some additional fields. Oh, notify subscribers for one. Nope, 
That's a good guess, but it's not what I what I uh, added. And then category. Uh, is a unsigned 16, I guess. Wait, is that right? I still have the Postgres docs. Yeah, two bytes, right, for a small int. Although, I guess it's not, it is signed. Is that what an int2 is? A small int? Yeah, i16. Great. Uh, and then tags. Uh, tags. A Vecca string, sure. All right, well, at least Oh, it doesn't like that. The trait. What does it mean? Uh, array nullable, array SQL type. That's perhaps another type. Vec T. Oh, nullable text. Sure. Uh, I guess it's actually like a vec of some. Uh, wait, no, option. String. Are you happy with that? with that expected our angle what uh, seems to be the problem oh no there's no problem <laughs> all right well anyway so just copy that and that goes also on to the end of series. All right, and that makes the errors over here go away. And we've moved the last little bit of um, kind of detail of the um, structure of data into structs. So now in create series request, we can add Pub, notify subscribers, optional bool, category, option I-16. Tags is an option of the VEC of option of string. Uh, okay, sure. We'll see how that, if that actually plays out, right? Uh, update series request, simpler sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, series detail view. So this is like when we're trying to edit the series and the UI. This is the, the data that gets pulled back to display that view. Um, yeah. Category. Yep. Back option string. Sure. So that should get serialized. It's basically a JavaScript list of strings. But some of those might actually be null. Um, and then, I don't think that any of this needs to come back in the, like, the list view. Like when we're looking at the list of series, I don't think we need to see these elements. So I'll leave it off a simple view. So for detail view, we have this implementation down here. 
It's just gonna read out the values like so. Out of date. Come on. Missing structure fields, they're right here. Just close and reopen. Hey, error goes away. All right. So update series change set is the thing that we're using to pass to Diesel to update the table. Um, so we also need these things here. And now update is wrong. So the last thing I think I need to do for update series change set is to make something that's going to convert uh, update series request into an update series change set and put that in schema and not that schema or structs rather right so what's this like impl from update series request for update series change set. And so basically this is how to go from the request to the change set, which is really straightforward in this case, right? And so then that goes away. And then this ends up being something like update series change set from body. missing a, a parent there we go you go with that now all right so we're pretty close to kind of like a general purpose update handler at this point the only thing that's specific now is like the the type here um, are we using and the type here and the reference to the table. So you could probably convert this into like a macro and then this file just becomes a one liner or maybe take some other approach, I don't know. Uh, okay, so that was kind of a, a side <laughs> to actually getting uh, things hooked up. Uh, and then we can do the same thing to episodes. So let's close others. There we go. So I'm going to just repeat the same process here. from update episode request for update episode change set. There's some logic here. Interesting, is that logic that's over here? It is. Copilot is so good. <laughs> Sometimes. Is it actually the same though? You can't, you can't trust. Sometimes it changes things in subtle ways. Um, yeah. So like here, we're able to actually like return an error back here, but we can't do that here. So instead we're just logging and then we silently fail from, a, from the client perspective. Hmm. It's not like there are exceptions. I mean, we could panic, but that's not helpful. <laughs> um, hmm. I 
So what are we actually trying to do here? We're looking at the tracks inside of body. And we're trying to convert that to JSON. Is that what's going on here? Starting JSON to value. Okay. And then, right, 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 because we're calling it tracks JSON, and then we we pass that to tracks. I see. Um, I think this is pretty unlikely to to fail. I mean, what could be inside of this that we would fail to serialize? And at least we're, we're, we're logging an error. So there is that as well. So if I do this, then this goes away. And this goes away. And this becomes here okay. and that fixes the error here all right so we've kind of done a similar transformation uh, but we should actually you know add the fields <laughs> The whole point of this um, kind of similar exercise where we start with uh, oh, it's a different order. So episode simple view is for like listing. And I don't think I don't think that. Um, simple view of the episode needs these fields. Uh, so we'll skip over all of that and we'll go to detail view. And so detail view will add these things. And we'll add them in the implementation. Uh, episode. Category and tags. There we go. And then create episode request. Should be very similar to the create series request where we can take these things. And then update episode request. Update episode change set to be able to update the episode and provide those values. And then linking it all back together. Okay. So that covers, uh, we got the database table set up. We have our CRUD API updated with these new fields and made it easier for now we just have one place per record type to uh, add things instead of having to go to multiple places because I'm I'm pretty sure like create. Aw. Okay, so create um, is still not abstracted. We'll we'll come back to this. Um, Abstract is not the right word, but um, we 
we've not moved the kind of the connection between the database and uh, the create request the episode request to here. Is uh, body notify subscribers optional? Apparently it is. Okay, defaults to false. It's not provided. Um, okay. Uh, we might need to do the same thing then for series. Yeah. So the next refactoring around here um, is going to be to move these the, this equivalence or translation into structs as well have it all in one place uh, but that I can do later don't need to do everything all at once here's what we got so far What does Copilot suggest for a commit? Add notify subscribers category and tags fields to episode and series create and update handlers. Um, let's commit that. So that, that should be all of the backend work needed for this. I think everything else happens in the front end, right? Because what we'll do is we'll be able to um yeah, let's let's also pull up the front end. It should be ready now. Although I probably need to rebuild. Right, so if I go to series GT New Horizons. Um Inspect, network, reload. I said reload, there we go. So we have the request to pull the series and we have a response that Firefox still cannot interpret. Can't handle the compression that we're doing, I guess. That's really weird. Obviously, the actual <laughs> the the actual browser can, but the dev tools can't. What's up with that, Firefox? We're up to date, and it's broken. There, so this can see it, uh, and we we don't see our new things yet because I think the build is still in progress. So that'll be that'll be that. Um, but I think that the next logical thing to do is going to be to update the UI elements for series and episodes, so that we can see the fields once we have them. So that'll be in edit and create because we didn't include the new fields in the uh, the simple view that's being used for uh, or the simple um, I guess I called it simple view. That's kind of an awkward phrasing for like the struct in the back end to be called a view. But the set of fields that are in that struct that are then being used for the endpoint that um, React admin is calling to populate the list view. Doesn't have those fields. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and pull up create 
and edit for the episodes as well. So this will be the first layer of UI changes, is just being able to see the new fields. And then uh, we need to go back and change the bulk episode creation. Hey, Brainless, good morning. How's your Sunday been so far? Good, I hope. Just starting it. All right. Uh, okay, so series edit. So we're going to add not that. Uh, what were the fields? <laughs> there was notify subscribers, right? So Boolean input. Source equals note if I sub um, and then category. It's a little slow because the build is going. Yeah, okay. Considering if formatting my laptop or not. Okay. Was this the laptop? Were you talking about installing uh, Arch Linux on it? Did that happen? Or is that still part of that consideration? Yep, okay. So, so giving up an arch then? There we go. Uh, so what were the fields? I have I have the list in here somewhere. Uh, category and tags. It went well. Oh, I did install arch on another laptop to test. I see. I see. It's so not this laptop. So I think I want like a select input. That's the thing, I think. Category. Uh, this is on the one that is freezing randomly. Might have a hardware issue, but want to discard possible OS issue. Fair, fair. Could you get like a like a bootable, like an image you could put like on a, a thumb drive, and boot from that maybe just to check that out without having to like go through an OS install. Uh, so React Admin, how do I have like a hard-coded list of values? Uh, let's see, select. That was not what I'm actually looking for. I don't want a radio button input. I want a select input. Yeah, but the issue is that it happens randomly. Sometimes it'll happen on a day. Uh, okay, I see. So you want you want to just go ahead and like have a working laptop with a different OS just to see if it works differently over over the course of time. And hopefully, <laughs> I guess the hope that it was just an OS issue and then uh, it sorted itself out. All right. So we want to provide choices. here. This is going to be like YouTube categories. All right. And then we're going to do like const. Yes. Fingers crossed. Yes. Now does Copilot know? <laughs> uh, maybe. That, that actually looks right. What are the odds that this is 100% accurate? I don't feel like buying another laptop. I already see five in my room. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, I guess I've had a couple laptops. I, 
I do have a couple of laptops. I have one that's sitting as like a, a server in a closet actually. Um, it's quite old at this point, but it, it, it does its job now. Uh, and then I have a laptop upstairs that I uh, have for things. Uh, I guess I have a work laptop too. So three. But they're all in different rooms. Uh, you know, I could just leave this as is and be like, ah, I'm sure it's fine, but let's actually check. Um, YouTube API cat categories. Always risky to be typing in the search bar. I mean, they have an API, right? To get the <laughs> to get the categories. Uh, but who's got time for that? Can we just call it? Explorer permission to use my account. All right, in this, no filter selected. Expected one a region code and ID. Region code. Is it like US? Show standard parameters. Okay, cool. Uh, ISO 3166 Alpha 2. So probably that. Probably US. Can we can we run that? Uh, right, so film and animation is ID one, auto and vehicles ID two. Uh, you reminded me with that comment. There was this guy giving a talk at a conference, and he was showcasing something where he went to the browser and began typing into YouTube, but something different appeared in his autocomplete. Yes, yes. Um, uh, sure. I am playing with fire. Uh, so it's 44 trailers. I'm just spot checking. I'm not gonna go through, nor am I going to have this, like call an API to fetch the list. I'm just gonna hard code it because it should be good enough. All right, and then we just need to add select input. Cool. What's the problem? There's no problem. There's no... Uh, did you... What did I type? Oh, input. <laughs> uh, okay. Cool. Now, the first thing that occurs to me is I'm gonna need the same list in a different view. Um, I get two options here. One, I could just make a file that exports the, this list. Or two, I could make a component that wraps select input. What is that list for? So when you upload to YouTube, you put a category on the video. Um, yeah. Uh, for that matter, yeah, it, it, it's mostly, I mean, I get, mm, it's interesting, right? Because when you upload the video, you use that, it's, it's been 20, <laughs> it's, it's mostly fixed. Let's, let's put it that way. It's mostly fixed. Um, these should be integers and not strings. What is the key combination to do the thing out there? Yeah. Alright, and then control right arrow and then delete and there we go. 
Now it's integers. Uh, I was thinking it was yours. You use binary numbers to allow for multiple category selection using or. Yes, that would be clever. Uh, but it's not, no. I think it should be safe to just hard code it. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this into a component. I have a uh, YouTube category. So, um, input dot tsx. And that's a lot of stuff that I don't need. Uh, at least for right now, do this. And then save myself some typing and just copy paste and then remove the things I don't need. So I'm just making a really lightweight wrapper around select input. Yep, like that. Um, except let's do source and let's do just do props. There we go. And then dot, 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 props. There we go. And then <laughs> any there we go and instead of using select input here now I can use YouTube category input uh, and this is just called category brilliant uh, except the name of the component is this and the file name is slightly different so let me rename Don't need that anymore, and then fix that, and there. Uh, and then one more field. What was the other field? Um, tags. Right. So for tags, Uh, there might be a good like react admin uh, component for that there's not like a tags input but there could be like an array input there we go um, like a chip is there like a chip input select array input simple form iterator like there used to be an example of doing this exact kind of tag editing input uh, in the docs. can't do you can't do HTML comments inside of uh, TS uh, or JSX 
unfortunately. So you have to do this kind of thing. So like this is this is you could do this. Uh, except you can't because tags is actually an array. So you need to do some kind of like array input. You could do that. Except not really, right? Because then you'd have to set, like, that's in anticipating that the array has, um, like, nested records inside of it. Okay. Well, I think this is a good point to uh, take a break anyway. I'll ponder that and go get some water, and we'll be back in a couple minutes. BRB.